everyone how many of you believe that life is like a rubik's cube let's be realistic here we are not handed a solved cube like this in our life so i'd like a volunteer to please come and mix the rubik's cube please mix it be gentle while mixing it and let me quickly paint a picture of how an average life looks like we are born in a family and arguably this is the only time when you can actually be yourself with no responsibility and accountability whatsoever slowly friends and education ball comes in our life and you start juggling as you're juggling your life some people to make their life more interesting add a hobby in their life and slowly as time passes by a life partner a girlfriend or a boyfriend comes in and the life's juggling starts off eventually the education ball drops off and the work ball is picked up and you start juggling continuously until you retire this is how an average life looks like but how to go beyond average how to break the chains of average life i say juggle less than you can an anonymous quote goes that the trick to juggling life is to know which ball is made of rubber and which ball is made of glass basically the one that doesn't bounce back and gets damaged when it falls down well i told you that if you are juggling less than you can manage because i can comfortably manage five balls but if i'm juggling less you know life is filled with problems and puzzles and when life throws a puzzle at you you can easily and comfortably manage can i please have the rubik's cube thank you thank you very much well i compare our lives to this rubik's cube because each rubik's cube has well over 3 quintillion different patterns it is as unique as our lives each and every one of our life looks similar from afar but when you look closely it is never the same even twin twins have different life from one another and if a person ever had to see each and every pattern of a rubik's cube it would take him at least 1.3 quintillion years sorry 1.3 trillion years even if he saw one every second well let me start solving the cube while juggling the balls that i cannot drop and let me give you a small anecdote of mine when i was 16 you know our brain is an amazing organ it works 24 hours a day 365 days a year and stops working only when you are in your exam hall <laughs> i was afraid of the same when i was 16 and taking up my 10th board exams so i was studying hard for my 10th board exams it was one day before my 10th exams and my dad after his afternoon nap walked into my room he told me how he asked me how prepared was i i told quite well that he told at 4:30 today i have got an inquiry for a show because i was a performer since 10 so yeah i thought okay anyways he wouldn't have taken the the show because which responsible father would risk his son's 10th board exams 
But the next sentence he told me baffled me. He told, Tejasvi, I have taken up the show. Get up, get ready, let's go. I was stunned. I got up without a clue of what's happening and uh, helped him pack up and went to the show. It was at Otera Electronic City. And I went in there. There were over 500 families of GenPact. You know, the hardest puzzles in life has solutions. Well, I go in front of them and I perform juggling. The show went really well. And after my show, the MC told, Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a huge round of applause for Tejasvi Anand. He is a 16-year-old kid and he has his 10th board exams tomorrow and he is performing and entertaining you all today. And that moment, ladies and gentlemen, I got a standing ovation for one minute long. And in all the best from over 500 people, which 16-year-old gets of no, all the best from over 500 people one day before his exams. That day inspired me a lot and that day taught that life's puzzles can be solved even while you're juggling other stuff. And while coming back home, I asked my father, Dad, why did you take up that show? He said, Tejasvi, in life, Life doesn't ask you whether you are ready for a challenge. It just throws a challenge at you. You got to catch it and face it. That is something that you had to learn and I wanted you to learn it and this is my way of teaching it to you. That day I had goosebumps and those goosebumps remain till date when I hear those sentences. Well, in my 10th, I scored over 91% and in my 12th, I took two shows in the middle of my exams and yet scored 93. And during my BCom and presently my MBA days, I am taking up shows in between my exams like it's nothing. Mainly because of the courage and the, the message that I got from my dad that I can do it. Because first time, everything looks impossible. It might be swimming or it might be cycling or it might be unicycling. When you're doing it for the first time, it seems impossible. One wheel, no handlebars, no brakes, and no worries. When you are juggling less, you tend to push yourself above average. You tend to push yourself to be beyond what you can do. And you tend to push yourself so hard that you start doing things that people only can imagine. You might ask, what about the times when I lose hope? When I think, when I try my level best and yet fail? I have an anecdote for you, one more anecdote. This happened very recently. A couple of months ago, I was uh, in an advertisement shoot with a Bollywood actress uh, and I landed in Mumbai. It was a two and a half hour drive from the airport. So I drove, we go, went to, I went to that set. There I was given an amazing caravan for myself and an amazing treatment and my sh shoot was to be over by around uh, 3 o'clock and I told the travel coordinator, ma'am, I leave by around 5 o'clock so that by 
7.30, I'll reach the airport. And by 10 o'clock is my flight, so I'll have my dinner in the airport and then fly back home. She said, okay. And right after that, due to technical issues, the Bollywood actress's shoot got delayed. So did mine. I left the set only by around 8.15 with just one hour, 45 minutes to spare for my flight. And it was show, the traffic was showing three hours. I was 100% sure that I'm not gonna make it. So I had lost hopes of catching the flight that day. And I communicated the same to my dad. He told, okay, consider for the next flight. But that day, the director, Mr. Alok, Kulkarni and the travel coordinator, Ms. Rasika, came to me and told me that, Tejasvi, we have a plan. Follow this. Believe in us and follow this. And they asked me to go to Thane railway station by car, take my luggage and get into the Mumbai local. Went to go to Ghatkopar, get down there and take a Mumbai, Mumbai metro to airport road. From there, go to airport via auto or bus or, you know, any means from there. I took an auto from airport road that day and somehow I reached airport by 9.45. I was, I had checked in on my phone thankfully, so I rushed into the airport with all my luggage and gave the security officer my ID card and my boarding, uh, my ticket, he saw, he said, I cannot let you in. I asked, why? He said, I can see just a little bit of face behind your makeup because I was looking pretty much like this. <laughs> that day, that was, that is me by the way. So that day I had rushed so fast that I had forgotten to remove my makeup, but somehow I just wiped off my makeup and just enough to be recognized and went through this uh, airport, through the, my security and with seconds to my boarding gate closure, I made it. I went into the airport shuttle bus and I looked around. I was not only the last one to board, I was the only one in the entire bus that day. But that day when I had lost hope of and I had lost belief in myself that I'll make it to that day, make it to my flight, I somehow believed in the director and the travel coordinator that day and gave my 100% and made it to the airport. I believe in times when you are not able to put your belief in yourself, Believe in someone who believes in you. At that time, miracles do happen. Seemingly impossible things. Like uh, balancing this glass diagonally like this. happens when you believe that it can. And what I would like to summarize here is, in life, you get a lot of challenges. And there are times when you don't have hope. At that time, look for someone who believes in you. It might be someone you know, it might be someone whom you recently met, or a stranger, or your Almighty, believe in them and in turn, the belief in yourself comes back to you. And I am a guy who follows my passion. I have been an entertainer for over, professional entertainer for over 14 years and I have been performing on stage as a hobby is over 19 years and I'm 24 now. And I believe that Choosing the right passion matters. 
So question yourself, what is your passion? How can it be made a feasible life choice? And then slowly keep trying and there are hard times. There will be times when you might feel that you have chosen a wrong passion. At that time, just believe in yourself. When you feel that you are in hell, make sure you keep going because why would you stop in hell? And in times when you are giving everything to your passion, make sure you give your 100% unless your passion is giving blood, of course. And in times when you are not able to ignite the spark in yourself, let those who believe in you ignite the spark for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>